Take a look at another example of hypothesis testing. So here we have an SAT prep class was offered at a nearby high school. Five students were selected at random. They each checked the SATs before and after the prep class. Their scores are listed below. At a 5% significance level, are the scores higher after the class? So what we have here is we have the students both before and after. Now, technically, there's two samples, right? There's the sample of the students before and the sample of the students after. But these are not distinct groups. So in all the other examples we've looked at so far, all of the different groups are independent. There's no overlap between these. But here you have the same student is getting picked both in the before group as well as in the after group. So this is going to be an example of the match slash paired samples. So our null hypothesis in this case is that the difference is going to be equal to zero. So there's no difference between these students before and after our mu sub d is equal to zero. The alternative hypothesis says, wait a minute, what if the scores are higher after the class? So remember, we defined mu sub d, usually this is going to be after minus before. So we're calculating this mean of the differences of doing after minus before. So if after is larger or higher than before, we expect this difference to be greater than zero. Now, in many cases, these will have zero be compared to it, unless it says, what if the difference is more than four? Or what if the difference is more than five? Then we'd have fives thrown in there. So you would, you base it off the situation, but many times you're just wondering, is there a difference, either a positive or a negative difference? So zero's often the choice. So what we notice here is that we have matched slash paired samples. And this is a one tail test. Now this automatically, if we know that we're working with match slash paired samples, we know that we're going to use a regular t test. That's it. No other options for match paired. So it just is a regular one sample t test that we're using, even though there's kind of two samples. So if we go over to our calculator, now we go over to stat, we go over to tests, we go down to t test, we enter in things, we realize, wait, I don't have the statistics, I need to do the data, but that requires us to enter in information into our list. So we need to go back to press stat, go to edit, and we'd like to enter things into L1. So when we enter our numbers, we're actually going to type in after minus before for each of these, the numbers. So we'll do 1920 minus 1840. And then I, I just allow the calculator to do the subtraction for me. So I do 2160 minus 1960. I do 2200 minus 1920, I have 2100 minus 2150, and then I have 2000 minus 2000. Wait, lost the calculator. Let me get that back. Okay. So we have 2,000, press enter. Okay, so this is our list of all of the, the differences. Now we, now we can go back, press stats, go over to test and down to t-test. When we enter in our data, we now enter in the data as though this was a normal single sample test. So our mu sub zero in this case is just simply zero. Our list is L1, our frequency is just one. Some of you might have L2, but in this case, the frequency is just one. We're wondering for the alternative hypothesis, is it larger than that zero value? We calculate, and what we get is we have a test statistic that is T is equal to 1.66 and our P value is equal to 
6. So since the p-value is equal to 0 0.086, which is larger than 0 0.05, which is our alpha, we do not reject the null hypothesis. Now, if you notice that what these, what we have here is we have three out of four of these students did better, right? These three students. This student just did about the same, and then this student four actually did worse after this. So because you only had five students, that one who did worse, I think, really ended up tanking this ability for us to have any type of conclusion that this SAT prep class really does improve grades. So we don't reject the null hypothesis. We don't have enough information to think that the scores are actually statistically significant higher, that it's the SAT prep class who was that was the main reason as to why these students would improve. So we do not reject the null hypothesis. There is not sufficient evidence to believe the SAT prep class improved SAT scores. So there we go. That is your first example of the matched pairs statistics.